Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and this is Superhero Rewind. The first two Superman films were originally intended to be one big epic. They were shot simultaneously, and had Richard Donner not been dropped due to arguments over how serious the tone of Superman 2 should be, and for going over budget, the two movies would probably have felt much more like one long masterwork than a movie and a sequel. And in fact, the Richard Donner cut does feel more cohesive with the first movie than this version, directed mostly by Richard Lester. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of the Donner cut or haven't seen it, the story goes that Donner shot a large portion of the film before he was replaced with Lester, and his film went into a vault expected never to see the light of day. With the support of Ilya Salkine nearly 30 years later, he was finally able to put together a cut with the footage he had shot, as close to his original version as possible. The most important scenes that are replaced in the theatrical version are those with jor speaking to Superman in The Fortress of Solitude. The producers decided to replace the jor scenes with Superman's birth mother, Laura, so they wouldn't have to pay Marlon Brando any more money. But a number of scenes shot by Donner were left in the theatrical cut, and those are, in my opinion, the best scenes. These include most of the sequences with Lex and the Moon, and the White House sequences with Zod, Ursa, and Nan. I'll be doing a full review of the Donner Cut next week, so for now we'll focus on how this version stands on its own. Superman 2 is essentially two converging subplots. The A story is General Zod and his cronies escaping the Phantom Zone and taking over Earth. The B story is Lois realizing that Clark is Superman and trying to get him to reveal this fact. Both are interesting, fun, exciting ideas, and though the execution of each is perhaps debatable, they're wonderfully interconnected ideas that come together nicely in the third act. This movie explores ideas with both plots that had rarely, if ever, been dealt with in previous Superman lore. What would happen if Lois discovered Clark was Superman and tried to force him to show her? And how close can Superman come to truly living a human life without giving up what it is that makes him Superman? I love that Lois has more common sense here than she often does elsewhere. Realistically, she would eventually have to realize that Clark and Superman are one and the same. If she never figured it out, she would be, as Tempest calls her in Lois and Clark, galactically stupid. Here, she puts two and two together rather quickly, and at Niagara Falls, when she can't get Clark to admit he's Superman, she has the guts to prove it by jumping into the falls. Surely, if Clark is Superman, he'll don his costume and rescue her. And Clark, maintaining the character of the shy, unconfident, clumsy reporter, cleverly finds a way to help her without revealing his powers. He uses his heat vision to drop a branch into the water for her to, la to latch onto. But later, Clark trips over a rug and falls into a lit fireplace, and when he doesn't have third-degree burns all over his hands, he can't argue with Lois though he tries for a second. He's Superman. Christopher Reeve's performance in these scenes is nothing short of brilliant. He transforms from Clark into Superman before Lois's eyes and ours just by a change in posture and the way he removes his glasses. At first I wondered if this was too convenient. Surely Superman wouldn't really be clumsy enough to trip over a rug and fall into the fire. But Clark would. So the really interesting question is, did he trip on purpose, trying to keep up the character of Clark Kent as he usually does, or did the incident with Lois jumping into the falls make him overcompensate? Is he trying so hard not to be Superman that he's becoming more like Clark Kent? Maybe he really did trip. He isn't pretending to be Clark when he's wearing those glasses anymore, he just is Clark. So Superman talks to his mother through a crystal, and is told that if he wants to be with a human woman, he has to lose his powers. This is a really sad idea. Recall that jor picked Earth because he saw potential in humans. He wanted Kal-El to set an example for them. They only lacked the light to show the way, he said. And now his mother, unfortunately having to speak in place of jor is telling him that if he is to be that light, he can never be happy. He can't divide his devotion between one person and humanity as a whole. So Superman decides to give up his greatest purpose to fulfill his own happiness. And although this is obviously selfish, he isn't made unsympathetic because of it. Great care is taken to give he and Lois the kind of chemistry and affection for each other that makes us understand why he would consider this. While Superman is weighing his choice, Lois is peeking around a corner watching with bewilderment, and through her eyes, we the audience is made to consider what he must be going through. He lives among humans, but can never be one of them as long as he's also their protector. Clark steps into a molecule chamber and the red rays take away his powers. Soon after, when he picks a fight in a restaurant with a man who comes on to Lois, we instantly discover just how much of a mistake this is. Without his powers, he is completely brutalized, and afterwards, Lois tells him she wants the man she fell in love with. He tells her, I wish he was here. 
Now, he's not pretending to be Clark Kent anymore. Now he has become Clark. There is no Superman. There is no Kal-El. He always used his powers as a crutch. He could pretend to be clumsy and antisocial because he always had Superman to fall back on. In the Fortress earlier, he told Lois that being Clark was fun sometimes. He got to be normal for a while. But it never occurred to him just what that meant. He comes to the brutal realization that he doesn't have the luxury of getting used to this life when he finds out that Zod, Ursa, and Nan have escaped and are declaring control of the world. In the early comics, Superman was always portrayed as being perfect. He never made a mistake. He was supposed to be the ideal American hero. He was the guy to try and live up to. No one could ever get close, but that was the bar, high and difficult to reach. This Superman is more real than that, but that ideal is still there. Clark made a huge mistake, and what he learns is that in order to be that beacon of light his father spoke of, he has to be the embodiment of perfection. That means complete devotion to saving the world, setting an example at the expense of his own happiness.